Hello everyone and welcome back to the Wizards Chat. Now today's episode is going to be a little bit different than our normal ones as we are starting senior interviews. This is where your fellow members of the class of 2021 can come on my show and talk to us about mainly anything that happened during their high school career that they want to highlight on or just talk about. Today for our first senior interview, we are interviewing Grant Black. Thank you, Morgan, for having me today. How are you? Pretty good. Can't complain. Can't complain. That's good. So before we talk about high school, I want to know a little bit about you. So let's talk about middle school just a little bit. All right. So what were some activities you did in middle school? Coming from a, a school that wasn't from Deering, I really did not have a lot of personal experiences outside of West Ward. Um, coming from a Catholic school, I didn't really oh. have a lot of you know, fun activities that we did since our funding was very low. We tried to make the best of the situation that we could. I played a couple of sports here and there, but none that carried over into the high school realm of world of things. Wow, so that's really interesting. I didn't know you came from a totally different school than Deering. So normally before entering high school, sometimes students have, you know, like a New Year's revolution resolution. They want to do something that they didn't do in middle school, but they want to do it in high school. So did you ever have that? Did you, was there ever anything you wanted to make sure you accomplished while you were in high school? I really didn't have a, a big revolution that I really wanted to achieve. But my main goal was just to work hard, uh, keep my grades up, and make a person that's more pristine and, uh, and a good outlook on society for West Warwick. That's great. So now let's get into a little bit of high school, but also you as a person. So I want to know more about you. Since this is the first time we've ever sat down and talked to each that other, tell me some things about yourself. Well, I'm a senior. I'm 18. Uh, I, I participate in many different things throughout, not only in our, in our community, but outside of it. Uh, I'm a National Honor Society member. I'm the senior class secretary. Oh, wow. I'm also in the Boy Scouts of America, or Scouts BSA, excuse me. And I also am in the Order of the Arrow, which is a national, which is the national equivalent of the National Honor Society oh, wow. and the Boy Scouts. And I am also on the golf team for our town. Now, some of those things that Grant man mentioned, we will definitely be talking about today. But I'm kind of interested um, about you more. What would you say are some characteristics that your friends or teachers around you would describe you as? Uh, some characteristics I do say are self-determined, self-motivated, um, a big a big thinker, uh, someone that processes a lot of things. Um, I look at uh, things through a bigger picture, um, so and I come from a different opinion, so I can be very optimistic. That's good. So. You have mentioned some activities that you have done, so let's jump into those to learn more about you and understand your high school year. So normally when kids come into high school, they are really excited to play a sport. Now I'm so excited to talk to you about this because normally we don't have a lot of kids that talk about playing golf, and you mentioned you play golf. So have you always been interested in golf? I'm actually a very recent um, player of the game. I started my sophomore year. Oh, wow. Uh, we live right on, West, on the West Ward Greens, so my dad said, you know what, let's get you into <laughs> golf as a, fun, as a fun activity to do. Uh, but the team that we've built with Mr. Quinn is an amazing team. Uh, we went to the quarterfinals uh, for sophomore year back in 2018. Uh, time flies when you're having fun. And then when <laughs> COVID happened, we didn't have a golf season last, last year. And it was kind of mm -hmm. sad. I was looking forward to a beautiful season and another opportunity to grow and develop my skills. So you aren't having this season we are this having, year? Yeah, oh, we that's are. good. We are. Yeah, it's actually going to be starting in April. Oh, 27th. really? It's just a very late season. So what are you excited about for this season? Knowing that last season got taken away from you, what are you looking forward to? I'm looking forward to building off of what we left off that right. sophomore year. Uh, Meg, uh, my friend Megan Janicki is, that, is the number top 10 in the state for the oh, female wow. golf uh, players. So we're hoping to go far. Uh, we are in a tough division, I do say, with Hendrick and Tollgate uh, and a bunch of other schools. But we're looking forward to our wonderful challenge and looking for a successful season this year. 
that's great. And I hope you guys get that season because, you know, it's exciting when you get to play your sport, especially yeah. during, you know, COVID. True. So now another activity that you are a member in is the, well, it's called a university-based program from your eye called the Smile Club. And I've heard about this from students that they are part of Smile. Um, so what is Smile? I'm not, I don't really know much about it. So Smile is an engineering program oh. uh, run by the University of Rhode Island. Um, it's been going on for about 20 years right now and West Worth has probably one of the most influential program, uh, one of the most influential groups in the mm -hmm. Smile program. Uh, we've always been a big, big, um, a big group, um, at least 20 to plus kids. Um, ranging from different different group, uh, age sizes, different lives, different backgrounds. Uh, for me, I, I started smiling in eighth grade as an opportunity to not only learn but also see what's going around in our community in Rhode Island. I learned a lot um, every year except for pre-COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, we would go down to the University of Rhode Island, uh, view the campus and do an experiment uh, using the facilities that URI has provided, and it will always be a fun experience. You know, we work with at least ten different other schools with other with other students, and we work together to create. You know, we did a submarine one year. Oh wow! Uh, we did a bridge. There was a lot. There's a lot of different examples I could could list, and I it has impacted me as a student. Um, it ha it helps me with you know understanding my sciences and my mathematics because um, I'm not a big science or a math guy, <laughs> I do say. But it, it makes me more appreciative of them and the people who want to succeed in those studies. I wish them good luck because for me, it's not my cup of tea. Really? So you're not really interested in those type fields, but you still are part of SMILE? Yes. Uh, it is most, uh, most, of the, most of the members want to go into the science or a mathematics field. I view that you know you can be you don't need to go into the field to be knowledgeable right. and understand the topics that you know we study in the smile club uh, the smile program allows you as a student to come in with no knowledge take take some of that and apply what you've learned throughout high school and you know use it in uh, an instance for example we had a, a field trip with a um, we had so we had someone bring down a a satellite, a mobile satellite to the to the school. We were able to view it, uh, observe it, and we were able to do some math mathematical calculations with it, which was really fun. Wow, so when you graduate, what are some benefits that you'll take with you from being in Smile Club as well? Some of the benefits I will definitely take from the Smile Club is being able to not only better understand the science world, but also be knowledgeable of all the topics that we discussed. Uh, it could be engineering, it could be right. biology, it could be mathematics, physics. It, to me, the SMILE program has allowed me to, to be well versed in such a topic that will allow me to bounce off of ideas and topics with other people and allow them to grow, allow them to grow with me through an experience. Uh, rather than working on one subject, we open up our program to allow more in uh, more studies to allow people to grow and if you like something that's amazing keep working on it we'll see we can tie it into another another subject within the science field you seem like a very wise and hard-working student you know I don't think we've been here for like what five minutes and I'm definitely learning that mm. from you just telling me about you know smile club and even golf too yeah. so another Achievement. This is a huge achievement. Would you say you're an honors kid? I would say I was. On, I uh, am an honors kid. <laughs> so you are part of the National Honor Society. So this is huge to get into if you're, you know, an honors kid, kind of yeah. like us. You know, you want to strive to get those good grades, and you want to be part of this society because you get a lot of uh, awards. You get a lot of acknowledgments from it. So when did you join the National Honor Society, and why did you want to? I actually did not join the National. I joined the National Honor Society my junior year, which was last year. Um, I put in for an application uh, my sophomore year. I got rejected. Oh. Sadly, I was. I did, I don't know why. I was unqualified. But 
I took what they said and I learned and I was able to uh, grow and develop my skills. Um, um, definitely it has helped me. The uh, National Honor Society is a society where intellectuals come together and see what we can do to better not only our community inside the school but outside of it and that's what we're trying to push forward uh, towards. Um, Mr. Prohaska Megan Jin and Megan Janicki, who's the president, are pushing for all of us to at least do 10 hours of community <laughs> service. And I think that's a noble idea uh, with a, within the time of COVID. Uh, it allows us to at least get some outreach into our s social community and it allows us to grow. Um, and that's all, all I really have for right now. So you said you were in National Honor Society for your junior and senior year? Yeah. yeah. So before COVID, because now with National Honor Society, we haven't really been able to do much that you normally would. Mm. So what were some things you did last year or even this year, like community service or just little things for your community with National Honor Society? Uh, with the National Honor Society, we've put forward a, a, tutoring, a tutoring program that allows students to come to us, you know, Monday, uh, Tuesdays through Thursdays, you know, it'd be right after school, two to three, distance learning or in person, and six to seven on all those nights, uh, distance learning to allow them to, you know, if you have a quick question, pop on, you can discuss it, um, or if you need to go over a huge topic, just say if you're in math, it would be someone that would be able to help you with that certain subject. Um, for me, I would be the history guy mm -hmm. or the literature, so you would come to me six to seven, or two to three in person or distance learning to help out with your studies. Um, I think it's a great idea. It is, uh, yeah. Especially with COVID, not a lot of kids are doing well, to put mm -hmm. it lightly. But, you know, it's good to at least have, you know, they're trying to make a change for themselves and trying to make sure that their grades are good to, so that they can pass. Right, and that's very kind of you and the other senior members because you're taking time out of your senior year to help other students and that's that's an amazing thing for any student to do especially you know with everything going on right now and you know it's it's kind of a hard process we don't really know what's happening but we kind of do so you helping those you know the freshmen especially since they have no clue at this point what high school is like for you to help them that is very very kind of you mm. so let's talk about our last and final activity, if you will. Now, you are a Boy Scout. Now, clearly I'm not a Boy Scout. I, I don't know about Boy Scouts at all. I've seen, you know, the Girl Scouts sell, you know, the cookies, you know, the basic, what Girl Scouts do, but I don't really know about the Boy Scouts. So I want to learn more about that from you. So when did you join the Boy Scouts? I joined the Boy Scouts, uh, actually I started as a Cub Scout uh, back in kindergarten. Uh, really? Was, uh, yeah, as a oh, tiger. Oh wow! Um, it was a fun experience, uh, but over you know I was in a big group of kids. We had at least thirty kids in our little den together. It was a lot of fun, um, but over time you know people change, and I think mm -hmm. you know their interests change also. Um, as we merged over into the Boy Scout program or the Scout program, excuse me. You know, this groups got smaller and smaller and got more independent. Um, as of this moment, I am an Eagle Scout with at least six Eagle Palms, uh, which we receive after we receive the rank of Eagle Scout uh, by completing merit badges, community service, and uh, you know, holding a Scout Masters conference uh, and a board of board of review within our own uh, within our troop. And at this, I have received. 80 merit badges, um, and I have six palms, two, uh, three, three bronze, three gold, and I believe two silvers. And um, in order to be an Eagle Scout, you have to be you know, do two years of a leadership position, uh, be able to teach uh, certain skills, um, and complete an Eagle project. Uh, during the time of COVID. Um, it's very, it was a very interesting experience. Uh, I did my, I built garden boxes for the Nathaniel Green Homestead in Coventry, Rhode Island. And it took me about three months to complete the project, you know, gathering from resources uh, to making sure that, you know, publications of the project were out, uh, making sure that 
necessary materials were there. We had to lay gravel out, making sure that the iron boxes were even. And we did a little cleanup there. In total, I complete. There were over 350 hours of community service given back to the uh, Nathaniel Green Homestead in Coventry. Oh wow! I'm like amazed. I've like I you know I never really know or I've never really talked to anyone who was part of this. So I'm really amazed. So. Is this something you can do all your life? To be at, you can be active throughout your entire life. You know, it cuts youth cut off at like eight, at eighteen. Oh. Um, but in the Order of the Arrow, which is another, which is uh, the National Honor Society for the Boy Scouts, uh, the youth go up to twenty-one. Um, so you can be in, scout, in the scouting program for a long time. Uh, you know, I hope to do the same thing. I've been very active within our. Council, which is our, pretty much all of Rhode Island, a little bit of Massachusetts, a little bit of Connecticut. Um, I work on staff with the Boy Scouts at our local adventure base camp over in Cranston. Um, we help teach scout skills, you know, um, cooking, camping, pioneering, et cetera, et cetera. And we also do, um, you know, other fun things like BB shooting, uh, archery, uh, climbing, you know, cope games, all that fun stuff there. Wow. You know, I'm, I'm really amazed about how much, like from a young age, kindergarten, you've been helping and being part of this community. That's, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Like I, when I was in kindergarten, I was like watching TV all the time. I didn't care. You're, you're out here like yeah. helping all these people. That's amazing. So I want to ask you this question yeah. because normally there's two types of students. I think I might know what your answer is, but normally when you can, you can come into high school, right? Yeah. Colleges are going to start looking at what you're doing. So you've done, you know, you're a Boy Scout, you, you're in National Honor Society. When you came into high school, knowing because you're, you know, you get good grades, it's safe to say you do. Yeah. Were you more looking towards what colleges were going to look at and what you were going to be doing? Or do you do these activities because that's who you are? That's what you love to do? I think it's a mix of both. Mm -hmm. um, in my opinion, you know, colleges look for certain standards and look for certain qualities that a student has. And, you know, it, it's a lot a lot of different, you know, it's like a, I view it as an algorithm, in my opinion. Like, what they, what they specifically want may be on paper, but it's also, you know, the outside of the classroom and the inside of the classroom. So mm -hmm. you can be a good student on the inside of the class, but if you're not, you know, good on the outside, if you're not very flexible, you know, I do these things for fun, and I do mm -hmm. them for uh, to be better than, to be bigger than myself. But it also keeps, it allows me to be more balanced in my school education, and pushing towards a greater goal in our society. Do you ever sit at home on the weekend with nothing to do? Check out Local Music Watch New England, your source for live local music, making local bands and venues publicly known. The group shares all of their information on their Facebook and website. So search for Local Music Watch New England on Facebook or visit their website www.lmwne.webador.com. Local Music Watch New England, keeping an eye on local music so you don't have to. That's great. You know, I, I'm like so amazed by everything you do because, you know, when we see students in the hallway, you can imagine what they do. And like seeing you and talking to you today, I'm just blown away, you know. Who, who would have thought? I can't imagine this. So I can only imagine your family. How proud are they? How proud are they? Are you? They are very proud. I do say they. You know, we. I've worked hard the 18 years of my life, <laughs> and you know, there there have been ups, and I do say, and there have been the moments that you know, down in the gutters, but we always keep ourselves, you know, motivated. Uh, there's always the bigger picture, and there's always the, the you know the top of the top of the mountain. We're, we're trying to always reach for and we never settle for you know, if you get there what can you do that is higher than that mountain that's a great way to think mm -hmm. that really is so since your class of 2021 I think we have to talk about this topic nobody wants to everyone dreads it but it's the coronavirus I have to so I remember the day I was in my history class and I was taking a test when Ms. Hassel came on the intercom and said that we have to go home because coronavirus was spreading, it was getting way out of control. Do you remember that day and what were you thinking? 
I think it's m uh, like any other day, you know, for me on a Friday when we are all released from <laughs> school. Um, I just got my car in January. I, I was, you know, in my pre-calculus class last period. My teacher wasn't in the in the in the class because she was driving, I believe, to Philadelphia or something to get a dog. Um, but I just, you know, like you and many other students around the United States, you know, we have all heard an intercom announcement from our principals or superintendents or whatever, you know, stating we have to go home. There was, for me personally, there wasn't a lot of information. All I can just think of, what is going to happen in the future. Right. And when that day hit, everyone just got, you know, scared. Mm -hmm. It remind, reminds me of, like, you know, I don't want to say it in a term or in a way that is offensive, but, like, you know, it ha like 9-11, you know, everyone went, turned to the news, everyone became scared. Right, everyone, like, what's going on? Like, everyone wanted proper information that anyone, no one could provide. So, you know, what we did, I actually had to go pick up my sister over at the Catholic school, you know, that was in Coventry. And what we did was just pretty much go there and then head home and just shut down, preparing for the next year. Right, and it's, you know, they say junior year is one of your hardest years. And when you went home and then we figure out we're staying home for the rest of the year, you know, I bet you were confused. Like, I have to take SATs. I, I have prom. Like, what were you thinking? The SATs weren't a big issue for me. I taken them December. I took them in December. Thank you. Luckily, my parents gave me the wisdom to say, "Hey, just take this. Mm -hmm. You know, you're gonna. There's gonna be more opportunities because we get the free one from via the state. So I was able to, you know, at least have that as a backup. While many students weren't able to have the opportunity, um, and then when we were all shut down for the for the rest of the year, you know, it it was interesting because a lot of you know we were still all learning, you know, how to do the online stuff." Know, a lot of teachers were very not prepared I but in the instance that we had you know I think everything worked out well for us um, and we can always can improve especially now since you know, mm -hmm. you know it's the choice of the parents and also the students that they want to distance learn you know, come in I think it's gone you know it's improved a lot right and they always say junior year is your hardest year. Would you say, knowing what happened last year, would you say junior year was still one of the hardest years? Did coronavirus make it harder? I think it made it easier, in my opinion. Um, without the worry of the SATs, for mm -hmm. me, it wasn't a big thing to worry about. It made it a lot easier and stress-free. Um, but what was stressful was, you know, changing my mentality of, now, oh, it's coming in every day, mm -hmm. uh, seven to one forty, seven thirty to one forty-five. I still have a job to do no matter what, and if I was able to complete my classes, you know, before like a certain period, I would be like, okay, what can I do to then prepare for the next day and the next day? So I mean, it you know, it's just the mentality of how you thought during those times that made or break your, you know, your year pretty much. Right, and then you had senior year coming up, and you know that following year, nobody really knew what was going to happen. It was like up until the last moment when they kept waiting for us to come into the building. Were you scared about your senior year? Not really. I was, for me, mostly. I just viewed it as just go back in, let's just knock it, knock it off, mm -hmm. knock it off right. I was taking by the beginning of senior year. I was already taking senior. Uh, um, high school courses through dual enrollment through CCRI, and they've been doing it all distance learning um, because of the amount of kids that you know take college courses. That's the community college of Rhode Island, and they've been um, they've been pretty much the same as what we've been doing. So taking that extra load has not only improved my studies but has also built uh, more foundation for preparations for the future and the college life too. Right. Now, we've been kind of rotating throughout the school year, like sometimes we'll be in the building, and you're day A, right? Yes. yes so correct. you're still in the building. You still have that high school senior experience. Right. 
Is there anything you wish you could do this year knowing if COVID didn't happen? What are some things you wish you could have done this year? Um, what I could have done this year is, you know, making sure that, you know, my studies are always tip top, uh, like, you know, like any other year. Um, I wish that the library was more open. Uh, you know, I view it, the library for me as a, a place of study and a place of, you know, time to reflect and think. So I wish it was more open to all students throughout, you know, throughout high school and throughout the, throughout the day. I also do think that, you know, uh, teachers should be more helpful for students too, uh, because we, uh, I'm taking the intro to teacher's prep uh, preparation course with Mr. Cicerone, and I've learned more, you know, the, t the teacher needs to like, you know, do a little bit more to help the students to ensure that you know, the material is understood and make sure that you know, all material is covered. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I think. So knowing that you had all of your freshman year and sophomore year and a little bit, well, maybe three-fourths of your junior year, is there anything you regret that you didn't do? Because now, you know, we're not in the building full time. Um, I do say there is like not going out to like the dances and the balls. I do regret that. But at moments, you know, for me personally, um, as an as a intellectual, I didn't think that they were really necessary. Uh, for me, you know, I would have to give and take. You know, what what comes first? Like, do my studies come first? We do my enjoyment with friends and other other kids, you know, at a, at a you know, at dances where I could be having more fun, you know, with other friends too, outside who don't go to the dances or doing other things. So I feel like you know, it depends on how you you view uh, a dance. Mhm. Mm so you still have about four months of school left, but I want to talk a little bit about graduation and a little bit of what you want for your future. So what do you plan on doing after graduation? Are you going to school? Do you have a major yet? Uh, I do plan on going to school after. Um, I plan on going to law school after oh, I wow. achieve my undergrads. Um, still in contention with between Roger Williams, uh, which is a privately owned school, and then uh, Suffolk University, which is up in the heart of Boston. Uh, you know, they're, they're both providing me wonderful opportunities. Um, none that I could dream of, you know, my parents ever dream of, and by, you know, it's a tough choice because they're both wonderful schools. I just want to make the proper decision mm -hmm. to ensure that, you know, what will help me, you know, succeed in life after. Right. Now, this question, you may not have an answer yet, but you probably will in a few years, and, you know, maybe you'll be sitting on your couch and be like, hey, I remember this interview. Let me see what I said back then. Do you have any do you have any goals for your life after high school that you hope to accomplish at some point? I, I do. I, I hope to graduate, you know, someone that is top of the class. Um, I hope to be, you know, recognizable. I hope to gain the connections and proper intuition to, to you know, further myself in society. I hope to stay local in mm -hmm. Rhode Island. Um, and as a lawyer, I think I can do that more achievable, that is more achievable. I hope to at least, you know, maybe run, run for a, a political office in the future. Uh, or it's either that or I go right into become a judge, depending on how, how the flip of the coin turns in my life. Wow. You know, it's funny because like seeing the, you know, the clubs and the committees, everything that you've done, it kind of lines up now with what you want to do. Yeah. So, what do you want your fellow peers, your class of 2021, to remember you for or by? What do you hope that when you walk across that stage, they remember you? I just want them to remember me as the, as the kid that worked from the bottom to the top, you know, as a new student from a different perspective of the world, you know, Ra reality really hit me at uh, middle school and I just want to show that my worth is as important or as equal to anyone else um, and I also want them to learn that you know never underestimate a person by you know where they come from or who mm -hmm. their family is um, because there have always been those biases around me and I want them to wipe a new slate with them pretty much now, 
my last question for you before we go. Um, how happy are you to be a West Warwick High School wizard? I would say I'm pretty proud and I'm very happy to be a West Warwick High School uh, wizard. Uh, it's a, for me personally, it's been a perfect fit. You know, the wonderful teachers I've had in the past. Uh, I could be listing a bunch of names, <laughs> but the list would go on and on and on. Um, you know, it, I'm very proud of my community. Uh, we work hard. Me personally, I want to make it a better place than what it is now. I hope that, you know, the community is open to th those decisions and hoping open to those changes throughout, you know, throughout life. You know, I'm happy I got to sit down with you today. Um, my first senior interview ever. You know, I'm really happy with, the, with you. I learned a lot about you and you seem like such a great person. And, you know, it's been, what, 15 minutes? I know you'll definitely go far well, in thank, life. Thank you for having me and I hope everyone uh, who's watching has a wonderful day. That's amazing. So, I hope you enjoyed this senior interview and I hope, you know, if you're at home watching and you want a senior interview as well, feel free to contact me at any of the sources you see on screen. With that being said, I'm Morgan Judd and this has been The Wizard's Chat and remember to stay safe.